Dr. Ellinger followed by Dr. Ken Winters. Mr. Ellinger. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, I'm Dr. Edward Ellinger, a board certified internist and pediatrician. Previously, I was the, the director of Boynton Health Service at the University of Minnesota and served as Minnesota's Commissioner of Health, where, among other things, I was responsible for establishing and overseeing Minnesota's medical cannabis program. Today, I offer some words of caution about legalizing the open adult use of cannabis before we have more information about the health and societal implications of such an action. When legalization of medical cannabis was discussed in 2013, few scientific studies existed that documented its benefits. However, the studies that did exist suggested that medical cannabis had the potential to be effective in selected conditions. Thus, the legislature established a medical cannabis program that was as evidence-based as possible, included a limited number of conditions, provided for data collection and analysis, and allowed for the addition of new conditions as evidence emerged. Minnesota's medical cannabis program has demonstrated the benefits of this incremental, evidence-based approach and the legitimate place that cannabis has in medicines, pharmacopoeia. While the evidence about the benefits of medical cannabis increased, with the exception of decriminalization, which is an extremely important but separate issue, and an issue that I support, the decriminalization, no scientific studies demonstrate any non-economic benefits of legalizing open use of cannabis. In fact, existing research demonstrates that legalizing open adult use portends detrimental effects on our society. The negative effects of cannabis on the developing brain and driving under the influence are two of the most widely shared concerns. But information recently released by Boynton Health Service opens new areas of disquiet. The 2018 College Health Survey of over 10,000 students in 18 colleges throughout Minnesota discovered that regular cannabis users had significantly lower grade point averages than non-users. Cannabis users had greater, cannabis use had greater effects on grade point average than alcohol use. Additionally, college students who have used cannabis within the last 30 days experienced sexually transmitted infections at a rate three and a half times higher than their non-cannabis peers and more than twice as likely to experience an unintended pregnancy, two and a half times as likely to be sexually assaulted and twice as likely to experience domestic violence. Cannabis use is also associated with a nearly two times higher rate of various mental health conditions. These students are most likely using cannabis to treat their mental health conditions without the benefit of healthcare professional support, a behavior that would likely increase with legalization. The progression of illegal medical cannabis use in Minnesota has been deliberate, incremental, and evidence-based. Given that legalization of open use will be an irreversible decision with huge impacts on our society, this approach should not be abandoned. We should wait until we know more about the impacts of legalization of expanded use of cannabis. I suggest that a health impact assessment be done by the Minnesota Department of Health to gather that information. However, if a decision is made to legalize open adult use, the oversight of the program should be in the Department of Public Safety, not in MDH. Although MDH should be involved with data collection and assessment of the impact of legalization, it should not be responsible for oversight of the program because that would give people the wrong impression about its health risks. As a pediatrician and a public health professional, I cannot say that this is a drug that is safe or healthy for general use. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellinger.